For the next two days, I'm challenging myself to survive off only what I can catch in some of the most beautiful landscape that Australia Bear has to cheers. offer. Let's go. We've got crabs. Yes. And we have left this skeleton. Let's get us straight on, eh? That is sensational, man. And this wild adventure all starts right now. Oh my goodness, guys. Look where we are right now. We are back in the mangrove system, guys. And what we're doing is absolutely crazy because for the next two days, guys, I'm gonna be eating only what I can catch. And right now, I think you can guess what we're doing, guys. We are looking for the giant mud crab baby to see if we can wrangle one of these things bare hand. I'm back in Australia, guys, and there's something about being out in the mud flats. I bloody love it out here. I love sniffing out fresh holes. Man, that does not sound right, hey. You guys you guys know what I'm talking about. I love just finding new zones where we can find mud crab holes, stick our hands down them, and see if there's a big dog hanging out. These animals are one of the craziest animals on planet Earth. They have the second highest testosterone level out of any animal in the world, and they are super, super, super hard to find usually, especially bare hands. I could probably drop a few crab pots out here, and they'd probably help me, but, uh, Man, we're doing it primitive style today, baby. We're walking through these mangroves and we're finding one of these dogs. Now guys, right now is uh, actually one of the colder months of the year here in Australia. So it's not supposed to be the greatest time for mud crabs, but you know what? We've got to, still got to go sniff one out. And if we can't find one, at least we got the hand spear, guys. I just dropped it in the mangroves just back there and uh, we can go try smack something a little bit later on with the hand spear. Now, as you guys can see right here, there's a few little pockets of water and stuff like that. And that is because usually this area right here, guys, is completely underwater. Now the tide has drained out completely, guys, and it has left everything high and dry, including all the mud crabs and you know a few other animals that are potential dinner that we can find. So what we're doing right now is we're just looking for anything that's been left high and dry on this tide and also some mud crab holes, guys, that we can stick our bloody bare hands down and see if we can find one of these things, eh? Guys, I may have just found the biggest mud crab hole. Start out this bloody session. Look at this thing right here. It's got literal shrimp in it. Are you kidding me? This is bloody huge, man. Jeez, all right, that's a good hole. Probably not the biggest hole ever seen, but that's a, a really good size hole. Why does every single thing that I say with hole sound super sus? Don't worry, we're putting our hand down this thing. Let's go. <laughs> So you guys can see right here, this is a big mud crab hole. Essentially what they do guys is they dig into this hole and they spit out all this mud and you can see that's pretty much what he's been spitting out. But uh, yeah, it's not looking like the freshest hole, but you know, we're going to put our hand down there and give it a shot, baby. Whew, this never gets old, man, but uh, this is what you got to do. You got to work for these crabs. We can't use hooks here in Queensland, so bare hand shears. Let's go. Oh, sick one. No. Nah, there's nothing in this one. All right, let's keep exploring, guys. Now, the plan for today, guys, is I want to go off a completely different track. So, I want to start exploring some new ground. Oh, talking about new ground, man, I think I just found a monster hole. Oh, we could be on here, guys. It's a bloody cavern in the ground. That's what it is. Someone's let off a bomb here, man. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? That was literally right next to that hole. The other one was right there. All right, let's put our hand down this one, see if anyone's home. If there's a bloody crab in here, the thing is Godzilla. Crabzilla. Man, when you find these monster holes and you got to put your, your whole bloody arm into it, it just gets you going, that's for sure. All right, look at this thing. This is what's sitting out the front of the hole. That does not look right. <laughs> no wonder the bloody water's so cold. <laughs> no more messing with freaking twigs that look like, you know what. All right, hands going down. Let's go. Holy crud. All right, I'm gonna have to put my bloody head into this one, guys. This thing's going hell deep. It's time to bloody go swimming. Let's put on these floaties. Let's go, eh? My whole bloody head just bloody went down that thing. That water tastes like crud, man. My whole head just went down that thing. I still couldn't reach the back, eh? That's how deep that hole is, man. Whole head up to here, stretched out. Even got this stick to help me. Still can't even hit the back of it. All right, let's keep going. Nice little swim in a bloody dirty, stinky mud crab hole. Oh, what else do you want to bloody start the day, eh? All right, let's keep going. We gotta find one of these big dogs. That mud crab swim, man, just absolutely lit me up, man. I'm feeling so amped right now. I reckon if I found a mud crab, I'd put the saddle on the thing and start riding it. It's pretty nuts out here, guys. When you're walking, you're pretty much just running into spiders constantly. There's bloody wasps out here. A few other creatures that will light you up like a bloody Christmas tree, but you know, it's all part of the fun. Just keep exploring and uh, yeah, we'll deal with that a little bit later on, eh? That was the first time I've ever swam in a freaking mud crab hole before. And uh, let's just say, 
I don't think it was the cleanest place on planet Earth. Let's just hope I don't get sick. Yet to get sick yet, guys, and you've seen the stuff I've consumed. So, let's keep going. I get a lot of questions from you guys asking like, wait, do you ever get sick? What does your stomach feel like after you eat, you know, so and so? Just to rattle off a few, sea cucumber, beach worms, uh, soldier crabs, raw pippies. You know, just everything, guys. And uh, I reckon my freaking stomach has more structural integrity than your bloody house. Because I'm yet to get sick, guys. And uh, let's just say, I've consumed a lot of freaking cooked things. And when I say cooked, I don't mean literally cooked. I mean, like, properly cooked, man. Sure, one day we'll consume something. And, uh, yeah, we'll end up in hospital. But until that day, we keep sending it. There's a main tree right here. And then there's this root system. And you can see right there. That's a mud crab hole right there. So... It comes down, it creates almost like a, I guess like a big like spider web system. And the crabs love tucking in underneath that spider web system. And that is usually where we find these big dogs. So I reckon we suss out that hole, see if there's anything down there, eh? Got a hole right here. Put me hand down. Let's see if there's anything down there, eh? No more messing around. Oh, oh, I thought I just felt something there. It's just got like a hard side to it. There must be like a root running against the hole. No, nah, there's nothing down there, man. What the hell? All right, let's keep going, see what we can find. Now to explain to you guys exactly what it feels like to uh, put your hand down one of those holes, it pretty much feels like you're about to get guillotined, man. Just waiting for the anticipation. Those crabs, they're actually like tucked up in their hole, just like this. And what you're doing is you're kind of running your hand along the side of it, and you're trying to just feel exactly where like their back swimmer is. From there, you sh can usually just get a grip, and then you can just pull them and yank them straight out. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly, guys, putting your hand down one of these holes, but there's a reason why we do it, and it's because these mud crabs taste absolutely insane. You can, usually, you can tell, guys, when there's a mud crab in the hole, There'll be a lot of fresh mud and shells and everything that they would have kicked out. That one looked really old. And I'm guessing it's really deep because the tide has just, you know, flushed it in and out for a long period of time. We're getting into some deep stuff right now. Look at this. Oh. My buddy board shorts are getting hooked on everything. Look at this, guys. Little spider right here. How you doing, buddy? Look at him. He's just crawling on me. He's sick. Right. He can bloody have a free ride. We'll let him let him do his thing on me. If he wants to bloody make babies on my chest, he can do it. Let's keep going. <laughs> He's just a little bugger. He's not going to do anything. Touch wood. I'm touching enough wood right now. Jeez. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there is a lot of bloody mangrove spikes. And uh, let's just say, Wado's running barefoot, as per usual, guys. You got to bloody run the barefoot. Stay connected to nature. And uh, oh. It's part of the fun, eh? Look at this, guys. This is actually insane. Look what I found out here. I found a bloody tallie. Someone's getting on the sauce out here. <laughs> Someone's just gotten so sourced one, now, one night. They've ended up in the mangroves, and they're like, yeah, the sesh continues. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's keep going, guys. That's insane. Here we go. Look at this hole, man. That is a solid crevice in the ground. That thing is a huge freaking hole. Backpack's coming off for this one, guys. Let's put our bloody hand down there and see if there's anything, eh? It's gone back and then like a little bit to the left, eh? <sighs> Can't even reach the back of it. All right, I got this long stick, you can see. Let's see if we can reach the back of it. Yeah, there's the back of it. Oh, it's nothing. I'm starting to think we might have to get the hand spear out to get some food, guys, because I do not know what we're gonna get for food later on. Now this right here, guys, is a prime example of where a mud crab would be if there was one. You can see all these root structures, they're kind of branching off. What they'll do is they'll tuck themselves in amongst all these little root structures. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just taking a look through here, seeing if there's anything around. You're bloody joking me, guys. <laughs> we found a dog. Now, I was telling you guys a little bit about these tree structures. You can see right here, this is the tree structure. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell. But right up, tucked deep in there, there's a mud crab. He's tucked deep in that mud system right there, guys. There's pretty much a very little chance that we're gonna get him out, but uh, the only way is really trying to use like a stick or something like that and trying to get him out. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but uh, we're getting this thing out, man. We've found a dog. Yes! <laughs> I'm so frothed out right now, guys. We're about four hours into this hunt and we finally found our first crab. We've got crabs, yes! All right, let's get this thing out. He's tucked way up deep in there. You can see, you can only just see him. 
And the only way that I can tell that that's a crab is because it's a super like shiny surface and that is its shell. That's like that nice shiny surface and it's a little bit different to a, I guess like this rough stuff that you see on these, uh, these branches. So fingers crossed it's a big buck and we can take her home or take him home. But uh, even if it's a girl, we found a crab man and it is winter, one of the hardest times to find a crab. So I'm counting this as a success mission. It's buried itself with all the mud. So it's completely asleep and dormant. It's probably waiting for that tide to flow back in and then it'll start moving around again once these mangroves, I guess, fill up with uh, water and everything like that. So we're gonna have to wake it up. It's gonna get super aggro, but uh, that's part of the fun, eh? Look, I can't even get in there. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Woken it up. What I want it to do is actually start making its way out of this hole here. And then we should be able to hopefully grab it. Come on. Get out of there. Fully tucked up underneath here, eh, guys? It's fully tucked up. You can see the crab right there. Here we go. It's making its way out. Slowly coming out. Oh, my goodness, guys. This crab is literally tucked way up deep right in there. But I'm getting a good look at it, guys, and I can tell that just by the size of its claw, it's a small female, which means it's not going to be one that we're going to be able to keep. We're going to have to let her go. Over here, guys, you cannot keep the females. You have to let them go exactly where I'm crab hunting right now. So I'm going to roll on some footage of exactly what these little females look like because I'm I'm not going to bother getting this one out. So I probably could have pulled out that female, but when you try to pull them out, guys, and you, you know you have to get really rough with it, sometimes they'll drop their claws and everything like that. And that pretty much makes them defenseless. So there's no point. I realize that that's a little female crab. There's no point in me really disturbing it. So I'll just let her go on her way. We'll keep looking for one of these big males, eh? Woo! Guys, we've been going and going for about three and a half, four hours right now. And we're yet to find one of those big male mud crabs. I reckon we bounce. Let's get out of here. I'm sweating like a bloody nun on a cucumber farm right now. So let's grab that hand spear. Let's go find that clear water and let's go smack a fish, man. We need to get food for dinner tonight. And if we can get a fish, I got a psycho recipe I want to show you. So let's get out of here. Let's go. Alrighty, guys, we've grabbed the hand spear. We're getting out of here. Let's go chase that clear water. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm so stoked that we got out of those mangroves. We've reached the clear blue water. It's time to now smack something with this hand spear, guys. We need to get food. So let's go. That's a good flathead, guys. Woo! That's a perfect size flathead, guys. That is our dinner. We have done it with the bloody hand spear. Look at that, it absolutely mangled our spear, but uh, that right there, that's a beautiful flathead. Woo!
Yeah. We are so on right now, guys. Look at this. The sun is setting over the horizon. Man, that was one epic dive out there with that hand spear. I cannot believe that Wobbingong shark, man. I don't know if you guys saw that. I shot that Trevally and I kind of like put it right in front of the Wobbygong because I wanted to see if it would smash it. The thing bloody smoked it, man. I was like pretty impressed with like its bloody bite. I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit scary. You do not want to get your bloody hand near that thing. That's for sure, guys. But uh, what we're doing is we're just making our way down this path right now because there's an absolute wicked spot that I want to do this cook up with this flathead. Let's get the fire going. It's bloody cold right now. Winter has definitely set in in Australia. You can see guys, this tide has flown in and it is so beautiful through here right now. We got the golden hour, you can probably see it's super bright right now. Let's get this fire going and let's just enjoy this sunset, hey? I'm so excited to try that flathead. I'm going to show you how we clean them up because they're super weird fish to clean up. So let's set up right here. Let's get the fire cranking and let's start cleaning this thing. Essentially what you want to do is you want to find the fish. You want to find where the side fin is, which is these ones just here. You can see these side fins. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your knife and you're going to run it on a 45 degree angle back up towards the head. So what I'm doing right there, you can see I'm running it back up towards the head on a 45 degree angle. Now from there guys, you can probably hear you're hitting the backbone right there. You can see that's the backbone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn my blade and start running it along the backbone. See, I'm just making like a small incision cut, guys, and then from there I can kind of feel out exactly where that backbone is. So I can see that's the bone right there. I'll start cutting down on this fish right here. All right, so you guys can see that's where the backbone is. I'm kind of just running my knife all the way along it right here. Now, this is the gut cavity, guys. There's not really too much meat down there. You don't really need any of that. So what I'm going to do is try not to, I guess, break any of that open. And I'll just keep cutting all the way along. Probably shouldn't be cutting towards myself, but, you know, who follows rules these days anyway? See right there, guys. We've done a really good job on that filleting. And it's super clean meat right there. This is going to be so bloody good. Let's crack open this stomach though and see what this thing's been eating. At least if we want to try fish for them sometime, they'll give us like a good indication. So it's not really much in here, eh? He hasn't been eating anything. He's bloody just as hungry as what I am. All right, we're going to chuck this thing back, guys. Let's get this fire cranking and let's start eating this flathead. I'm so bloody hungry. Let's go. Here we go. This is exactly what we want. You can see all of this dry stuff, guys. What we're going to do is we're just going to collect a whole heap of this and this should be perfect kindling to get this fire going. It looks like a perfect zone to have the fire, guys. So just going to make a little fire pit right here. We'll put our kindling right there. Oh my goodness, that's a heap of kindling. Let's collect some small little sticks now. That thing's bloody going to go off like a house on fire. We'll get some different sizes. Should be good. This is the stuff that you want to put on just after you get the fire going with the kindling. So. Let's collect a whole bunch of this. It's super fine branches, you can see. It's pretty much like building a house, guys. You've got to have a good foundation. You've got to have good kindling. Then you have this super light, fine stuff. And then you can put on some bigger sticks and then bigger and bigger and bigger. You can't just be putting on some big stuff, guys, because it's not going to work. It's just going to burn out. You need to keep building it up. So you can see exactly what we got. We got kindling, the super fine stuff. And then we got these little twigs that we just collected. And then we got some medium sized logs. And then we got the bigger stuff that we can put on. Alrighty guys, you can see it is golden hour right now. Let's get this bloody fire cranking, eh? This kindling should go off. It should go up really, really easy. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. You can see it's starting to go right there, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna let it burn out. You wanna make sure that it's got oxygen and that should hopefully just go right there. Make sure the oxygen keeps filling it in. You guys can see I've slowly built it up. I'm now going on to, I guess, some bigger pieces of wood. Jeez, it'd be good if I actually got it on the fire. Fire's absolutely cranking. It feels so good because it's actually quite nippy out here this afternoon. So let's keep this going, eh? Right, you can see our fire's going super strong right now, guys. Let's go for a little bit of adventure because I want to find some type of stick up here that we can use to cook up that flathead. So we're looking for like a green piece of wood. That's what we need. This looks perfect. You guys can see this is a nice green piece of wood. It's alive and that's exactly what you want. You can see it's nice and green. So we'll take this back to the fire and this will be perfect for the cook up. Now what I want to do is actually strip all the little pieces off it. And I want it to just be the one main branch as you can see right there. And that's the part that we're going to use with this flathead. All right, so now you guys can see I've threaded that piece of meat through the piece of wood. Now what I'm going to actually do is just uh, Oh, that fire is bloody cooking me eyes. I'm going to use that skin as protection. I'm going to slide this piece of meat up this piece of wood, and I'm going to come back out just like that. 
And now you guys can see exactly what's going on. We've almost made this little skewer of flathead. Oh, freaking smoke, man. So we've made this skewer of flathead, guys. Now what you can actually do if you want is you can just put it straight in the ground just like that. Now that's a green piece of wood right there. So that shouldn't burn. That should slowly just cook over that fire and it should be absolutely beautiful. It's threaded onto the piece of wood super evenly. So the cook should be really, really nice on it. If you're anything like me and you're lazy when it comes to cooking, I reckon this is the best way to do it because you can literally just set it up over the fire just like this. You can go fishing, you can do whatever you want and this will just slowly just cook away just like that. You guys can see exactly what's happening. That fish is slowly starting to cook away right there. And uh, if we want it to cook a little bit quicker, we can just push this into the ground like that and it'll be close to that fire, guys. I reckon that's one of the sickest and coolest ways to cook fish because you can just leave it. You can go adventure, do whatever you want. You come back and dinner's sorted. It's like bloody having a missile in the kitchen cooking for you, except that it's uh, nature itself. Shoo now you can see this beautiful piece of meat, guys, is just slowly cooking away right there. And what it's actually doing is it's creating a lot of smoke and that's gonna actually go into that meat and create like a really, really, really nice smoky flavor in that meat. And uh, yeah, this should be absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited to try this. Day one, baby, we have bloody done it. We are eating good tonight. Tomorrow we got a massive day, guys, for day two but I'm ready to go and I reckon we're gonna have a good dinner. I'm gonna be fueled, ready to go. And day two tomorrow, we're gonna smash this out. Oh no, guys, look at this. This tide is falling in. It's gonna crush our fire. Damn it, no, look at it. Slowly burning away. All right, let's see if this fish is, oh yeah, that's perfect. All righty guys, that tide has flown in and put out our fire completely. But look at this piece of meat. It actually looks like it's cooked perfectly through. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna thread it. Oh yeah, this is perfect. You can just tell, guys, so the meat has just set. Look at this. What you're gonna do right now is you're just gonna peel it away from that skin. Beautiful white meat. Oh my goodness. Look at that right there, guys. All right, let's give her a shot. That is actually off the charts. Are you kidding me? It is like just properly set. So, that right there is a perfect dinner. I reckon the good old humble flathead has to be up there with one of the best eating fish in the ocean. It is so good. I'm gonna smash down this meal right here and watch this sunset. We have done it, baby. One day complete, day two tomorrow, and I'm bringing out the big guns. We're bringing the spear gun to the party, baby. And what we're gonna do is we need to shoot something solid because I wanna show you guys an absolute psycho recipe that I learned in Indonesia. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early. It's gonna be a wild one. Let's go. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me, guys? Check out these conditions right now. One word, it is absolutely cooking. That's definitely not one word, man, but check it out. It's day two. We got the spear gun, we got the fins, and we're getting into some good stuff, guys. But first, I want to pull up at these sand dunes because I think there might be some breakfast that we may be able to get. Let's pull up here. I'm absolutely frothing out right now. Can't even bloody speak properly. I'm actually feeling pretty good after that flathead yesterday. It really filled me up, but I reckon that there might be something along these bushes up here on these sand dunes that we may be able to have for breakfast before we get out there with the spear gun and go smack something. Now along these coastal sand dunes, guys, there's a specific type of plant. It's a type of fruit that are absolutely incredible. You guys will be able to find it along most of Australia. We found it right here. Look at this. Oh, we're so on. This is what you're looking for right here, guys. These beautiful purple flowers. Now, when you find this plant, what you want to do is you want to find these things right here. And it's a type of fruit, guys. Now this fruit right here, what you do is you pretty much just squeeze it just like so and it has this fruit that's inside. You can see it coming out right there. That beautiful white fruit. That right there, that is breakfast. I'm not even joking, guys. It is like absolutely incredible. It kind of reminds me of like a fruit like off Avatar or something like that. It's like super cool. It's bright purple in color. You pop her out and it's got like this white, like firm flesh. To describe it, it's kind of like a mix between like a pineapple and like a dragon fruit. Like it's really, 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 really nice. The only bad thing about them is usually they're baking on the beach, so they're quite warm. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I like my fruit really, really cold. Alrighty guys, I'm just exploring along this beach right now, but it's got me thinking about how much I truly love Australia. I love this country so much, man. And it offers so much for me and provides so much for me that, you know, sometimes it's really hard to leave this place. So. I, I really need your guys' help. I need you to let me know in the comment section right now if you think I should go and just get a troopy or something like that and just send it around Australia 
or if you reckon I should go back overseas, you know, Vanuatu, Fiji, Indonesia, Maldives, you don't really know. It could be anywhere. Let us know in the comments what you guys want to see because essentially I love to do this stuff, guys, but I also love making banging videos for you and that just makes my day. So let me know what you guys want to see and uh, yeah, let's just keep exploring. Now, if any of you guys watched the Indonesian videos, you'll remember that one of my survival challenges, I found a coconut. It rolled off the island and went into the ocean and started drifting off into the sunset. It was super emotional, guys, because that was my only type of water that I had for the rest of the 24 hours. I just had the worst thing happen to me, guys. I just put the coconut on the other side and that wind's picked up a little bit and I'm just looking out. Look at that. That's my freaking coconut down there, man. Man, I think we just found it. Look how dusty this thing is right now. <laughs> this thing is literally like a dinosaur of a coconut. Put this thing in a museum and people would go look at it. This is definitely that coconut from Indonesia, guys. This thing is so bloody old and dusty. Jeez, this thing's solid. There we go. Look at that. That's all the old meat, guys. All the old meat that's come out of it. Oh, that thing just doesn't smell right, eh? Alrighty, guys, I need to gear up right now and I need to get in that water. If I don't get out there right now, I think I'm gonna pass out. Froth levels have never been this high in my life and that is because, well, it's absolutely pristine out there right now. I reckon that visibility out there today has gotta be like at least 15 to 20 meters. <laughs> Let's get out there, I'm frothing, let's go. My goodness guys, this water clarity is off the charts, man. I'm so excited. We got a little bit of a swim out to the reef, but we got to bloody smack something with this gun and you wouldn't believe it. I forgot my gloves, so I'm running bare hands, guys. That was probably one of the sickest dives that I've ever been on, man. There was just like that turtle that came in and I'm not talking about that snapper that we missed. Oh, those snapper, man, they are so hard to find for Spiros and um, to get an opportunity to take a shot at one in such shallow water like that, let's just say I absolutely blew it. I should have nailed that thing, but you know, it's just how it goes, guys. Sometimes you miss those fish. Yeah, that thing would have been a lot better eating than that tailor that we got, but it's in the backpack, guys. And I got a psycho recipe that I really, really want to show you. It's a style that they did in Indonesia, which not many people do in Australia. And uh, I think that I can show you something really, really cool that uh, you guys can try at home yourself. So uh, let's make it down to this beach right now. Let's get this fire cranking and I'm gonna show you exactly how we do it. It is delicious, man. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I don't know if you guys saw, there was that fish down there, that trevally. It looked like something had bitten its tail off. The thing didn't even have a tail, yet it was still surviving. It was still swimming. You guys would have seen, I was trying to like 
go after it and like catch it and with my hands. Yeah, I wasn't gonna keep it or anything. I just kind of wanted to have a look at it and then let it go. Um, but he was still surviving, bro. He was bloody thriving without a tail. I don't know how long he's gonna make it. He's probably gonna get smacked up by good old Brucey, AKA a big shark. Good on him, I hope he survives, man. That is what you call resilience. No tail and that thing's still going. Are you kidding me? What an absolute legend of a fish. Alrighty guys, we have come down to the exact same zone that we were yesterday. It was too beautiful yesterday. I had to come down here for the cook up again. But as you can see, the tide is a little bit lower and that's because we're here a little bit earlier. And also, the tides get one hour later every single day. So, say the high tide was at seven o'clock yesterday, it'll be at eight o'clock today. So, let's set up this uh, fire right here, guys. This actually requires me to build some type of, I guess, grill rack that we got to put the fish on top. So I'm gonna get straight into it and show you exactly how we do it. Let's go. What we need is we need four white pieces and we also need a few straight pieces. So you can see like these pieces right here, these are perfect. They're long, straight, and they've kind of got a little Y in it. And that is exactly what we're looking for right there. We're gonna create this fish rack right now. The first thing you need is you need four pieces of this Y-shaped wood. And then what you need also is these beautiful long beams. And from this, guys, we're gonna create a fish rack that we can lay our fillet over and then essentially have a fire underneath it that's gonna cook it really nice and evenly. So I'm gonna build it right here and show you exactly how to do it. So what you wanna do is you wanna find a flat, even surface that's exactly what we got here. And we want to put these into the ground. We want to make sure that they're super solid because essentially we're going to have a fire that's going to go underneath this and it's going to be cooking away this fish. So we're going to lay them down. We want them to be, I guess, like, I reckon 15 to 20 centimeters off the ground. So you guys, so you can see we've got our four pieces of wood right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure this out and just see exactly how long it is. So it goes to there. I'm just going to break that off. Now that's gonna be one piece that sits across just like that. So you can see, I'll do it with this one too. So you guys can see right there, we got these two pieces of wood. It's kind of created, I guess, like this little structure. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this extra long straight bit of wood and we're gonna pretty much lay, I guess, little pieces across here and it's gonna create a type of rack. We're gonna have the fire that's cranking underneath here. We can lay the fish across here and it's going to be the perfect even cook. And because this wood right here is green, it's not going to burn. It's going to hold its form. Alrighty guys, we're going to get into cleaning up this bad boy. Look at this tailor man. This is actually like a really nice oily fish and it should be perfect over this fire. So I'm going to show you pretty much how the Indonesians did it guys. They just butterfly this and we put it straight over the rack. It's a really cool way to serve fish. So first things first guys. What we want to do is we want to get rid of the guts. So I'm going to put my uh, knife in the anal right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it shallowly. Shallowly? I don't know if that's the right word. Shallow up to the head. That sounds a bit better. There guys, what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut away these gills. Now you can see right here, we want to just separate it from, I guess, the collars of the fish. And what we're doing is we're just opening it up just like that. What I'm going to do from here, guys, is I'm going to grab this knife and I'm going to find exactly where these gills are. And I'm going to grab my finger and I'm going to see exactly where it's attached. And that's exactly up at the head here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a small little cut up at the head right here. You can see from here, guys, what you can do is you can actually just pull down on it. And you see all that. That's all the guts. It comes out in one motion right there. And you can see it has left the fish completely Nice and clean, we haven't opened any of the guts. Now the next thing we're gonna do guys is we're gonna start at the tail right here and we're gonna make a small cut. Now what we're doing here is we're actually just running the knife all the way along this backbone right here. We don't wanna go all the way through, but we're just gonna come all the way down up towards the head. What I'm gonna do right there guys is just keep coming all the way down, all the way down, just like that. And you can see we've just opened this up absolutely beautiful right now. I'm kind of just lifting away this meat and I'm just slowly cutting down towards this tail right here. What I want to do guys is I don't want to go all the way through. I kind of just want to stop and you can see we have butterflied that fish absolutely beautiful. We've done that one side right there is we're going to flip the fish over. We're going to do the exact same thing to the other side of this fish. So we've pretty much filleted both sides guys and we have left this skeleton. Now what I'm going to do from here is just run this knife all the way down this fish. You can see right there. 
and want to come out the tail. Now guys, in Indonesia, what they used was sweet soy, and they put some spices over it also, and it made it like really, really sweet in texture, and made it really, really, really tasty. We're eating only what we catch, guys, so I'm going to do you guys dirty. I'm not going to use anything. I'm just going to put this straight over just like the way it is. We've got to stay loyal to the challenge, baby. So we're eating only what we catch. I wish I had some sweet soy. But uh, yeah, that's dinner right there. Guys, see this skeleton right here? Don't disregard this. You can actually put this straight over the grill also, and I guess pick out all the meat in between the bones. So we'll put this to the side, and uh, we might be able to chuck it over the fire. The only thing is, I just don't think our grill's gonna be able to fit everything. Look at it, it's a pretty small grill, and I think it's only just gonna be able to fit this beautiful fish right here. But anyway, let's get this fire cranking underneath that grill because we're losing light very, very quick. Let's grab all this. Here we go, here we go. We got this fire going. Looks super, super, looks like she's gone. Just wanna keep this air filled. Right, that looks good. Fire's starting to crank here, guys. Guys, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna relay these green pieces of wood across the rack. And I'm gonna get the fish cooking because we're losing light very, very quick. Ow. Oh, this is going to be so good, man. We've got this fish right here. Let's get her straight on, eh? Oh, skin side down. Look at that. That is just going to cook perfect. Oh, my goodness. This is so good. We have literally done it, guys. Look at this rack. That is so sick. We'll just keep this fire fueled underneath, and this should hopefully just cook beautifully. Oh, yeah. That looks so good. All right, that's just going to cook a lot quicker now that that meat is exposed to that fire. Now you guys can see the structure of this is actually holding really good, even though it's burnt along here. And that is because we have used green wood, guys. And that green wood, it doesn't burn. It holds its form even when the flame is hitting it. So if that was any type of other wood, that dead wood, it would be completely gone. So make sure you use that nice green wood and it'll hold its form just like this. This is probably like my favorite way, I reckon, to cook fish over an open flame. I find that it gets like pretty much the best even cook. Alrighty guys, I think our fish is just about done. We'll put her straight back up here, right where we bloody cleaned her, except we'll put it next to where we cleaned it because we don't want all the guts and everything on it. All right, moment of truth. Oh, look at that meat right there, guys. That looks perfect. What we'll do is we'll just get rid of all these sticks. We'll see if it's cooked through. Oh yeah, that is perfect. You can see our fish right there. It is absolutely glowing. It looks incredible. Let's give her a shot, baby. Oh, that is sensational, man. That is cooked so nice. Look at this. The meat is literally just falling off the bone. Hey guys, I'm gonna smash down this fish before it gets completely dark. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We have done it, baby. Two days eating only what we catch. I'll see you on the next adventure. Much love. Shee-hoo!